Good morning, everyone. I'm Gene Valicenti with this special edition of 10 News Conference, Ask the Governor. From my WPRO radio studios, a lot to talk about. Guns, the budget, immigration. Let's get started. Pawtucket is kind of a little adventure land over there by the water. Are you looking to put a soccer stadium in? Yes, I am. I, I think that there's a way to do it uh, without putting any more taxpayer dollars in. And uh, so we're working with both the developer and Commerce Corporation Board as well as the city of Pawtucket. The deal is, I guess, well, if Pawtucket can, can come up with $10 million on its own, uh, you will maybe shift the money around. Uh, the money that was for ancillary development, maybe we can push it to the stadium, get it built first and faster. But you have to get it through the Commerce Committee, and they didn't vo take a vote. They're skeptics over there. No, we're, we're making sure that we give the Commerce Corporation the information they need. Uh, I, I wouldn't expect that they make an important decision like that in one meeting or two meetings. So we expect to be gathering the information uh, making sure that the Commerce Corporation Board has the information, and when they have the information that they feel as though they can take a vote, then we'll I'll put it on the agenda for a vote. I would expect that something four to six weeks away. Right Now, you know we got burned with 38 Studios, so any kind of a deal that involves state money, Rhode yeah. Island is a skeptical. Here we go again. Is it a here we go again? No, because actually the dollars that we're appropriating are last dollars in, so mm -hmm. the project has to be completed in order for the for the taxpayers' dollars to go in. So I think it's it's protected for the taxpayers, but also, you know, when you talk about the cost, the increased cost, that's everywhere in the country right now. Okay, if you ask me to be an investor, would you handicap it for me? This soccer stadium will be built, what, 50-50, 60-40? What do you think? No, I think it's more like 70-30. Another thing popped up. Um, a former Central Falls Mayor Diosa, he's running for treasurer, mm. and he said that uh, the Commerce Secretary Stephen Pryor, who's also running for treasurer now, that he should step down. He's going to be you know, stepping aside within the next week or so. Uh, that was always in the plan. Actually, it's, he's hung in there a little longer because of the Tidewater situation okay. and how complicated that is. But I think that we're prepared to do a handoff. You know, we wish Stefan the best. I'm supporting Mayor Deosa in the election. Uh, the secretary knows that. Yeah. Uh, but we are still have a working relationship that's very strong. And, I, and I'm happy that Stefan did stick around because, as we said right. earlier, that project's very important. And we've got to make sure we get it right. And I think that we have the you know, the framework to make that happen. So Stefan's going to leave, did you say, within the next week or two? Yes. Uh, last night there was another effort to get the gas tax repealed in Rhode Island. I know you don't want to do that, and I think the reasoning is there's not that much money to save, and why should we give a guy buying gas from out of state a break here? We need his money. Am I recounting there's that multiple, correctly? There's th multiple things. There are only, f I think, five states in the country have done it. So several have done it for a short period of time. I think that the total amount of uh, tax relief that we provided and the, uh, the proposals that, uh, you know, I worked with the Senate president and the speaker, on provides per capita far more um, per capita relief than anywhere in the country right now. Uh, over sixty million dollars of car tax relief. I think forty million dollars of child care, uh, child tax relief uh, that uh, that people will be receiving checks. You know, within a reasonable period of time, if they have families and they, uh, and along with the veterans, we I'm very pleased that the veterans uh, we're going to finally align ourselves with other states in the country where we're not going to be taxing the right. veterans' pensions. So when you total it all up. Gene, it's our our package there is significantly higher per capita than than the bordering states. And I've been following the gas tax. Like for instance, Connecticut is one mm -hmm. of the states, right? Lowered at twenty five cents. Uh, we should have we should be about ten cents higher per gallon right now, if because of the uh, of them lowering their tax, and we're about maybe four cents higher. So what happens is that the 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 um, you know the person who's filling up that tank is not getting the full benefit of any any you know, any tax tax reduction. So I think that we have handled it well. I like to see us do something on the energy you know the electric rates. I did propose that to the general assembly, and I mentioned at the press conference that we're going to revisit that. Uh, if if right. there is a steep increase in October, which we're anticipating. Now, with the gas, though, everything you mm -hmm. talked about is fine. And, mm -hmm. and by the way, if we can get rid of the, that dreaded excise tax on the cars, wonderful. That was, that was Speaker Mattiello's baby at the beginning, so we want to give him credit. I mean, he started that. He got the ball rolling for that. You're going to finish it, though. And Speaker Sikarchi is going to get it across the finish line. It's all done. Uh, but with regard to the gas tax, that's something we would feel today. Everything you spoke about is is to come, and when I do my taxes, I'll see all this. But this is today, gas tax. New York, Connecticut did it. The president's even talking about the getting rid of the, f the federal gas tax. You don't see that as some immediate relief? Well, I think that it's the way, first of all, there's only five states that have done it. They understand that uh, that the dollars that are collected, we have those assigned to certain improvements on the roads. There's certain things there that you 
that you got to take care of. But mm-hmm. yeah, the the relief there is not. I, oh, it's psychologically I get it because who the heck wants to pay five bucks a gallon? Uh, you know, I I filled up my my wife's car the other day, and and it and it it does hurt, mm-hmm. and uh, and we know that it does hurt. So, uh, but the m- large part of the increase is um is baked into this uh, inflationary uh, cost of the of the gasoline gene. So. If uh, I think that if, if it made sense to the taxpayer, you would do it. Um, like I said, there's a reason why only about five states have done it. Maryland has already suspended it. New York did about an, uh, about a 16 cent uh, mm-hmm. thing for between now and the end of the year. They, they're estimating on a per capita basis significantly less tax relief than what Rhode Island is getting, giving its taxpayers okay. right now. 438 97 Seven six. That's the number you want to talk to the governor. Uh, I'll get to the calls. Just let me just let me quickly touch on the gun thing. I know you said send me the gun bills. I'll sign them. And you would have even signed an assault weapons ban had there been an appetite to pass that. You said send me them. I'll sign them. So right now you're going to sign raising the the uh, age to buy a gun and ammunition twenty one. You cannot carry a long gun or a rifle out in the open anymore. And uh, you're going to restrict the number of bullets in a magazine to ten. Now with regard to that last one. That was passed in kind of a roundabout. You heard all the crap. I'm not breaking news here. Are you are you okay with that? S- Pat signing that the way it was done. That Speaker Ruggiero, he really orchestrated that. The president, had, president. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Senate President Ruggiero, he really orchestrated that. That hadn't been done in decades. That kind of an end run around. Are you satisfied with that? Yeah, I, my feeling is that w- if it comes to my desk and it's uh, approved by the House and the Senate, then it's a bill that I can sign, and I'm going to I'm going to certainly sign that. The procedures I don't really I'm not aware of the procedures, but I'm told that those procedures are 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 used, and um, and that that's something that uh, that the Senate President felt strongly to to use it. I asked them both uh, when I had brec- I have weekly meetings with the uh, uh, Senate President and the Speaker, and they meet with me. We talk about the important things in Rhode Island and. I did ask them what what can I do to get those those bills to my desk, right. and they felt as though that if I you know certainly be vocal about it, and I have been vocal about it, and I'm I think that we have um, done something that is important for the safety of the people in the state of Rhode Island, as well as the especially uh, you know our students that we've you know done a complete review of every school in the state of Rhode Island, and I've got the report back. So it's a it's a combination of things, Gene, to lower the risk, and we should be doing everything we can to lower the risk. And this is not inconsistent, which we have with our bordering states in, in Connecticut and Massachusetts. With regard to the way it was passed. Now, look, uh, it's, it's, it was legal. It's just a kind of a, you know, some people say it's a slippery way to do it. Uh, and I know you're the governor. You can easily say, hey, I don't know. I'll sign the bill. Whatever, however they get it to me, I'll sign the bill. But let me press you a little bit on that. Because I've heard for the past three days, talk radio has been full of nothing. People, this is a terrible thing. They bypassed the system. It wouldn't have made it out of committee. That's the way the system was designed. This is kind of cheating. Just take the last word on that. The procedures that are in place, I'm not going to question them. Uh, I, my job is to take a look at the bills that are in front of me and do I support them or not support them. And then when they come to me, I'm going to sign based on that, based on whether they are things that I believe are in the best interest of the state of Rhode Island. Okay. And just one more question on guns. Um, uh, do you own a gun? No. You don't. Uh, have you ever thought about having a gun for protection? No. No. All right. Well, you have protection now. So yeah, I, I, this is now. true. And I yeah. thank God that the state police have been with me for the last 16 months as I travel around because uh, it is a it's, a it's a different world out there, Gene. Right. Sometimes politicians go after you. They don't like things you've said. I've seen the video of that. Uh, but if a guy says, listen, I want a gun for protection. I behave. I want a gun. I'm going to keep it under my bed. If I ever hear a bump in the night, I'm going to pick my gun up. And they said, why can't I have a, yeah, I want, an, uh, I want an assault type weapon because I want it loaded with 20 bullets. I want to shoot until the guy is gone. Is there fundamentally something wrong with that? Well, I think that we're living in a time frame where that's not the case. The, 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 those weapons are being used in ways that over and over again, multiple shots are being fired at kids in schools or, or churches. Or We know that we have a problem there, so we need to address it. No one's no one's taken away the right for someone to have a gun in their home to protect them and their property, uh, and um, so that that right's not being taken away. Uh, the level of how many bullets are in the chamber have been taken away, but 
not uh, not the ability to own a gun. And there's going to be court action. I felt I understand from yesterday. There's a law firm is going to sue because they say you use the word taken away, and they say, well, that's legally a taking. You can't take something from someone without compensation. Have you you fought you up on this particular challenge to this? I said I'm aware of the of the potential challenges. Will. But that's like I said, we haven't done anything less, you know, that inconsistent what other states have done on this issue. Right. You must be willing to forego this very uh, this this uh, this uh, gun rights uh, lobby that were up there screaming, yelling at the state house. Not lobby, but uh, constituents. You must be. You count the numbers, and you must say, "Well, I could live without their vote," because they're not going to vote for you. You know, when you're in the position I'm in, uh, whether I was a mayor, as chief executive, or a governor, you're not. You're not basing your decisions on the vote. Okay. You're basing them on what's in the best interest of the state of Rhode Island. All right, four three eight nine seven seven six, and then we'll get some questions from the people for the governor, and we'll talk about other things. And any topic is open. Whatever you want to talk about, we just ask that you respect the office, and uh, let's go. Denise, you're on the radio. Go ahead. I just want to know why our Social Security benefits keep getting taxed in this state. We senior citizens are really feeling the effect of everything that's going on in the economy with the gas prices and food and trying to heat our homes, and we seem to be the forgotten few. We're looking at every area where we can uh, level playing fields with with our bordering states, Massachusetts, Connecticut. I think we're fairly consistent with them right now. I know that they they have passed a uh, exemption on the first. I think uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to guess what it is, but I think it's ten fifteen thousand dollars. So we're going to keep on trying to figure out ways to do uh, you know to lower uh, the taxes where we can. We did it with the veterans this year. Um, we've done it with, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, with motorcycle purchases now trade in values on the motorcycles actually can be mm-hmm. d- reduced from the sales tax. So I'm with you. We're, we're going to find ways to continually, uh, you know, like we did with the veterans this year, we were one of the few States that was taxing the veterans pensions. Uh, and we are looking at the exact things that you're, that you're talking about. Okay. So you can't give her the answer she wants today. Sometimes no, I, you, yeah, I mean, budgets are, you know, budgets need to be balanced. And uh, but priorities, that's a priority for us is to making sure that we're competitive with uh, on the tax structure with Massachusetts and Connecticut. Have you uh, picked a, or selected a new the Department of Health director? Not yet. Uh, the plan there is that we've got a transition plan now to Dr. McDonald and thank Dr. McDonald for coming in mm-hmm. uh, during a time of transition when people were concerned whether the Department of Health was actually going to be operating right. efficiently. It's I believe it's it's been uh, you know improved in many ways, uh, but now we'll have a transition in, in inside again. We they uh, what we found is that there's a great deal of talent in the Department of Health on the bench. So we're going to have someone to come in as an interim. Uh, that'll be announced very shortly if it hasn't already been announced. Uh, as Dr. McDonald leaves at the end of the month, and thank you, Dr. McDonald. And then we are we're we'll be going through the process of a selection process for a permanent. Uh, expecting that we would have uh, a name for the for the Senate for their consent uh, in in uh, early January. You favor somebody who's there. That's what it sounds like. like I have, promote from within. I I favor promoting from within. Okay. I met with the Colonel uh, yesterday from the State Police, and uh, what happened there is that he's moved up to the top spot. And we've had like I think twenty five different movements for people who are actually serving our state as state police in terms of up up up, up levels of of their uh, management. Now you know whenever I report the departure of the uh, Dr. Alexander Scott, uh, I always say the controversial departure, because you gave her forty six thousand dollars for three months, and uh, I don't know if that's been fully explained, but I I believe it to be because you didn't want her hanging around anymore. You you wanted to clean this. You wanted to sweep. And she left, and that was the deal to get rid of her. Do you want to just amplify that? The doctor came to me, said she had some opportunities she wanted to pursue. I asked her to stay, uh, just like I did Stefan Pryor, because I think continuity is important. Mm-hmm. Uh, she uh, expressed that it was time for her to move on, and, and we set up a, a strategy, an exit strategy that satisfied us, satisfied her. We did get work because we were doing a, a health lab state health lab mm-hmm. that she was uh, you know instrumental in getting off the ground she certainly did that uh, work with us we work with her on different grants that uh, that that will uh, I believe that will get into the uh, Department of Health so we got our money's worth out of that but at the same point in time that was that, that was dr. Alexander Scott's decision mm-hmm. and uh, and we and we and we accommodated that decision and then we moved on uh, in a way that I think that has been very healthy for the state. Right so now. you're saying you got forty six thousand dollars worth of work for three months out of Doctor Scott. You're satisfied with that? I think that the the gross amount of uh, benefit they will get will equal that or more. Okay. Well, you made a little news there. We haven't heard yeah. what you know what she actually did. 
uh, for that money. All right, I want to take some calls. Steve, go ahead. You're on the radio with the governor. I have a question about uh, state retirees pension system. Prior to the uh, restructuring of the pension system back when Gina Raimondo was governor, I understand that the uh, reductions had to take place to make the pension system via, you know, be sustainable. But what about the uh, retirees who, pri- who were already retired prior to the restructuring? I mean, um, couldn't they keep getting the 3% COLA until they reach the $25,000 limit? Yeah, so I'm on board with you on this. Uh, actually, we make a little news right now. My intention is to put some sort of a, uh, I think it's taken too long to achieve the levels to get the COLAs back. We know that people are, you know, there's may- people who are making, uh, you know, $30,000 $30, 30, a year or so that were depending on that COLA, and uh, I, I agree with you. We're going to, we're, I'm going to be proposing next year actually a tax credit for, uh, on the Rhode Island tax credit that could potentially offset uh, uh, the uh, the loss of the COLA uh, until the COLA is restored. Is that money that you have laying around, the surplus, the billion dollar in pandemic? Are you going to try to get that? I think that we're going to see where we are, and then we're going to, we're doing the math right now in terms of what that credit could be. Uh, I think it's good that we would give it to Rhode Islanders that stayed in Rhode Island and have paid the money in Rhode Island. And I think that is a good concept that we're going to try to do, which we're going to, you know, a pro, uh, uh, I'm going to propose uh, that, uh, just like I did with the reduction in the sales tax, I'm going to propose some strategy there uh, that makes sense uh, because it is taking far too long and people are suffering. And those who have stayed in Rhode Island, we love them, so we're going to try to do something for them. Mary, go ahead. You're on with the governor. Just keep it tight for us. That's all. I just would like to know how this bill that's passed is going to keep the guns out of criminals who don't care what the laws are. The way I see it, the criminals are not being kept in prison long enough, and they're getting let out way too soon. And um, it, the only people that are getting penalized with this law are law-abiding people. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody said yesterday, you know, the criminal, he may have 30 rounds in his chamber because he's a criminal, and then I'm limited to 10 to fire back. Again, there's no one thing that's going to uh, address the issue that's that we're living with right now, and no one can deny that we're living with that. Two 18-year-old kids... The last, uh, you know, in Texas, uh, legally bought a, a gun, went into the school and rapid fired and killed, what, almost 20 people. Mm-hmm. So the fact of the matter is that um, people are legally buying guns and using them in ways that are destroying families and they're hurting people in ways that we can't even imagine unless we were in their shoes. So okay. that my feeling is there's not one thing you can do, but you have to reduce the risk. And we're going to do everything we can to reduce the risk without taking away the right of an individual to have a, you know, to own a weapon. Let me go to Jack. Go ahead, Jack. Quick question for the governor. Go. Your ban uh, um, caps it out at 10 rounds for handguns, which are not really used in these mass assaults. He's not drawing a distinction. Uh, yeah, I'd have to see. I'd have to take a look at that to see whether I believe it's across the board. So, in other words, a handgun that carries more than 10. You can't do that anymore. Only a, on the handgun, whatever it is, only 10 bullets in a magazine. I'll read that through. I, 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 I understood it applied to all, all weapons. All weapons. All guns. Okay. In Massachusetts, uh, they are going to give illegal immigrants driver's licenses. Where do you stand on that here? I've been on the record supporting that and, uh, and, and working our way through to make sure that, again, uh, that it's a, you know, that the... The cost to it is absorbed by the individual who is receiving that um, that privilege. So um, this could be argued till the cows come home, but uh, you're going to sign that bill if it comes to you. I am. And I it, think it's going to come to you too, because Chicarchi's for it too. I believe it's going to come, and I look at it as an economic issue for me. The number one priority uh, in the state of Rhode Island is, in, is increasing people's incomes. During the break, you rattled off the statistics on the economy. I know that your unemployment is better than it was pre-pandemic, and you and you're the second, you know, second the state is second in this place. Go ahead and say that, but then I'm going to counter with the overall state of the economy. A lot of people think we're in the dumps. Go ahead. Second in the country in terms of the recovery, an economic recovery. Number one in the Northeast, lowest in unemployment we've had in 34 years, the the largest surplus that the state has ever seen, and we're using that surplus in ways to invest in the economy, whether it's in a port in new in uh, a new port in uh, in East Providence, or it's uh, investing in Quonset or the Galilee fisheries, uh, investing in schools in a way that we've never have have been able to do before, and using surplus to do, dollars to do that. Um, yeah, so I think that 
we are the budget that with the Rhode Island 2030 plan that we were able to do with the Lieutenant Governor Matos with with the commerce is a blueprint for the state of Rhode Island that we really should take a look at. It's an interactive site. Mm-hmm. That plan relative to education, health, uh, blue economy, green economy is reflected in our budget. And the budget that got through the House last night is going to provide us, I believe, at least with at least five years of economic growth. Okay, everything you said, Governor, we'll put that on the good side. But you've got an administration in Washington that's saddled with record inflation, the worst in 40 years. An interest rate that was hiked three-quarters of a point, the highest in 30 years. Gas prices, 502 a gallon in Rhode Island. Everything you appear to be accomplishing is being undone by the Biden administration. Are you a faith in this president? And what about concerns about his cognitive health? Because the majority of Americans now think he's not up to the job, according to certain polls. And the Ipsos ABC poll that came out, he's in the 20s, 27. That's your party. That's your president. Yeah, so I I met personally with the president of the United States in the Oval Office. And what I saw was somebody who was really up to the task. So, uh, you know, face to face. Not many people do that. I've been able to do that as a governor. This inflationary issue is really difficult. We started started your talk. Uh, with uh, the Tidewater issue, it's real. We have to deal with it. Uh, the the gas prices are just, uh, they're killers. You know, it, it's, it, that's an economic killer. That's got to re- get reversed. That's something that has to get done on the national level. That is on the president's plate. Um, and But what, what I look at is Rhode Island, right? I look at where we are in Rhode Island right now. When was the last time? We have never been, fr- you know, we're always first in and last out of economic downturns, Gene. Forever, mm-hmm. my whole life. Today, this, we've reversed that. We are actually leading the country in terms of an economic recovery, lowest unemployment we've had for 34 years. These are the things I'm focused on. I also know there's challenges. I'm not denying there's challenges. But my, my job is to keep the momentum going, the economic momentum going. Job training is going to be done right now. Uh, investments are being made in housing. We didn't talk about housing. $250 million that got passed last That was night. yesterday, yes. That's got yep. passed. I'm going to leverage that into a billion dollars of housing. We were in East Providence yesterday. You had a caller from East Providence uh, announcing an $80 million uh, investment in housing uh, in 18 different communities in the state of Rhode Island with over 850 homes, where 800 of them are going to be in the affordable housing area. We've got momentum the plan that is in place in the Rhode Island 2030 mm-hmm. is a real plan adopted by hundreds and hundreds of people in the state of Rhode Island, not just out of our office. And our budget reflects that. And the budget that's got, is getting passed is going to feed into an economic recovery like the Rhode Island has never seen. And we'll have to overcome those things you're talking about in terms of right. this inflationary situation. But that shouldn't stop us from doing what we need to do to protect Rhode Island's economy. Well, the red wave is coming. You've heard that. Everything's going to change in Washington. It appears as if the Republicans are poised to take over by every survey. Uh, yeah. what, 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 partisan or nonpartisan, it appears they're going to, that the game's going to change. It could change, <laughs> but we've got, we've got the dollars to make it happen. So, and then we also have a congressional delegation that is really helping Rhode Island significantly. Everywhere I speak, I thank Senator Reid, White House, Congressman Cicilline, and Langevin for providing us the resources yeah. that are helping us put us in a spot, like I said, we have never been the first out of an economic downturn. The real estate bubble that hit in 2008, yep. 9 took us seven years to recover our jobs. We've already recovered that and more. So uh, I think that what I think that there is a little bit of optimism that I think that we have. But I, my dad always told me to be a as Father Day come up, a, a you know, a realistic optimist. Well, Happy Father's Day. Well, you have thank two you children. Much. Two children. They're uh, little now, right? Uh, not little no. anymore. But uh, we're, we're proud of our kids, and, uh, and uh, yes, and I think that, so happy Father's Day out to everybody. I, Covered a lot of ground. In the meantime, that's 10 News Conference, your number one and longest running political show in the region. I'll see you next week.